Hello comparison test viewers and welcome back to another All Cars Everyday video. I'm standing here with the 2020 Hyundai Santa Fe which was redesigned last year. And it's a fantastic SUV, but how does it stack up against its corporate cousin, the Kia Sorento? Let's go find out. This is the 2020 Sorento, which is Kia's take on the crossover platform. I'm comparing these SUVs at the upper $30,000 price point, which means I'm comparing specific trims of each SUV and I won't be adding any options or packages to those trims to keep the comparison test as fair as possible. More specifically, I'm comparing the Sorento EX to the Santa Fe Limited. With that out of the way, let's delve right into our first category, which is value. Korean cars are known for their value proposition. Kia and Hyundai typically promise more bang for your buck than any other manufacturer, and I'm curious to see if they can still deliver on that promise with the two models I have here today. Before we get into the features and standard price of the Sorento, let me note that there is one fundamental difference between these two models that I can't control for. The Sorento is a three-row SUV that seats seven passengers, and the Santa Fe is a two-row SUV that seats five. This comparison is less to say which is the better SUV, as that depends on your seating and storage needs. It's more about helping you pick which of these two will better fit your lifestyle. Okay, now that I've cleared that up, let's take a look at the Sorento EX all-wheel drive. This trim starts at $37,090. On the outside of the Sorento, there are big 19-inch black finished rims that set the SUV apart from traffic. The gloss black theme carries on to other trim pieces as well, including the grill. The exterior mirrors are heated to prevent fog from accumulating and blocking the driver's vision. The Sorento features Kia's LED positioning lights, which fall beneath the projector beam headlights. Below both are projector beam fog lights. The Kia has a neat trick called Smart Welcome, which lights up the door handles when it detects the smart key approaching the driver's pocket. It's particularly useful at night. Though you don't have to use the key fob to unlock or lock it, you do have the ability to start the Sorento with a push of one of its buttons. Up top, there are roof rails, and out back, there's a power tailgate with an adjustable height limit. The interior is full leather, and the driver's seat is decked out with 10 ways of power adjustment and 2 ways of lumbar support. The passenger gets 8 ways powered and 2 for the lumbar as well. Both of these seats are also heated in the SX trim. The second row of seats folds in 40-20-40 sections, and the third row is 50-50. All passengers are bathed in light by the huge panoramic sunroof, and they're cooled by dual-zone automatic climate control. The rear rows get their own controls for the climate control system as well. Other convenience features inside include an electronic parking brake, push-button start, express windows everywhere, two USB ports for charging, and four 12-volt outlets. The technology in the Sorento revolves around two different screens, both of which are 7 inches in diagonal. The the gauge cluster has a TFT display in between two analog gauges, and it displays information like instant fuel economy, miles until empty, trip distance, average speed, and more. To the right, there's a colored touchscreen in the middle of the dashboard for the infotainment system, which includes Bluetooth, Android Auto, and Apple CarPlay. These audio features play through the Sorento's six-speaker audio system. The Sorento is stuck between segments, and I suppose this is an adequate, but not overwhelming amount of features for the price. An auto-dimming rearview mirror and Sirius XM are patently absent here. The Santa Fe Limited all-wheel drive starts at $37,350. Not to be outdone by the Sorento, the Santa Fe also comes with 19-inch alloy wheels, though they are a more traditional silver color. The Santa Fe also has full LED exterior lighting, including the headlights, DRLs, accent lighting, fog lights, and tail lights. Like the Sorento, it has the welcome feature that lights up the door handles. The liftgate is powered and height adjustable as well, but it's also hands-free, as owners can swipe a foot under the rear bumper to trigger a sensor. The final two features are the heated exterior mirrors and a smart key with proximity entry, like the Kia. The inside has leather, like the Sorento, but in the Santa Fe, all five seats have the ability to heat, and the front two are ventilated. The driver's seat is 8-way power adjustable with 4 ways of lumbar support with a leg extension cushion. Standard on the Santa Fe is a memory function for the driver's seat, and the passenger also gets 8 ways of power adjustment. The second row folds 60-40, and those passengers also get window sunshades. Speaking of the windows, only the front two get the express up and down feature, but that panoramic sunroof in the Sorento is also present in this SUV. The technology in the Santa Fe is similar to the Sorento, but it adds Sirius XM, navigation, and a surround view parking camera as standard equipment. It also has wireless phone charging capability and a head-up display for the driver that shows small speed, navigation, and active safety instrumentation. The gauge cluster has a similar look and function to the Sorento, but the center screen of the dashboard is an inch bigger at 8. On that unit, there's Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and Bluetooth. The Santa Fe has a sweet Infinity audio system with 12 speakers, so audiophiles will want to stick with the Santa 
Fe or an SX trim Sorento, as that comes with a 10-speaker Harman Kardon system. Convenience features on the Santa Fe are more in line with what I expect an SUV at this price point to have, with an automatically dimming rearview mirror including home link, push button start, and two USB ports up front and two in the second row. The Santa Fe has Blue Link, which is an app that comes standard for three years that allows drivers remote access to their car for features like locking, unlocking, starting, and tracking, all from their smart device. The Santa Fe has plenty more features on the inside and outside than the Sorento has. The Sorento offers a third row standard, which is definitely a factor in why it has less features, but we'll rate the additional seating in our final category, functionality. The Sorento is an older model than the Santa Fe, and I think that it shows in this category. If you don't need the extra seats and bang for your buck is a huge factor for you, the Santa Fe wins easily. On to our next category. We'll be looking at the active safety features of each model and the passive IIHS ratings of each SUV. The Kia has blind spot collision avoidance assistance, a driver attention warning monitor, forward collision warning and avoidance with pedestrian detection, as well as lane departure warning with lane keep assist. There is also a parking distance warning indicator, rear cross traffic alert with collision avoidance, and smart cruise control with stop and go. This is an extremely lengthy list of standard safety features, and it's something Kia should be proud of. Another thing that it should be enthusiastic about is that the Sorento is it is a top safety pick plus from the IIHS. It got the highest rating of good everywhere except headlights, where it got a range of scores from poor to good. The ease of use in the child seat anchors was also rated acceptable. The Santa Fe has even more tech standard, with everything the Sedona has plus a sensor to remind drivers if they are leaving a child in the rear seat. It also has safe exit assist, which monitors the passing traffic to keep passengers safe when the car gets parallel parked. It even matched the Sorento and IIHS standings, also obtaining top safety pick plus and and good everywhere except the same areas the Sorento faltered. The headlights rankings were from marginal to good though, slightly better than the Sorento. The Santa Fe has a couple more active safety features standard, again probably because it's newer. They're pretty marginal differences though as both vehicles score very high for safety. They both perform phenomenally versus other three and two row SUVs. The Kia has a 3.3 liter V6 under the hood that makes 290 horsepower and 252 pound-feet of torque standard. This engine is mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission that routes power to all four wheels. In total, this powertrain can reach 60 miles per hour in the Sorento in 7.2 seconds. A V6 is not offered in the Santa Fe, instead it uses a 2.4 liter inline four-cylinder engine that makes 185 horsepower and 178 pound-feet of torque. It has a similar 8-speed automatic, and I've added the all-wheel drive system to this trim like I did in the Sorento. Rento. This engine has automatic stop-start technology where the engine shuts off after the car has been idle for more than a few seconds and starts up again when the driver takes their foot off the brake. This technology is used to save fuel. The power deficit renders the Santa Fe slower than the Sorento with a time of 8.6 seconds to 60. You can get a faster Santa Fe in the SEL 2.0T trim or the Limited 2.0T trim as those four cylinders are turbocharged. Those trims are still slightly slower than the Sorento though as they are still down on power. In this segment, the Sorento comes out ahead. Neither of these engines are spring chickens, but at least you get the stronger V6 in the Sorento. The Kia gets 19 miles per gallon in the city and 24 on the highway for a combined score of 21 miles per gallon. Though the Hyundai comes with a smaller engine and that stop-start technology, it barely beats the Sorento in EPA ratings, achieving only 21 in the city and 27 on the highway for a combined 24. One of the only benefits of using four-cylinder engines in the place of a larger V6 is the fuel economy advantage, and I think the Santa Fe does a bad job of maximizing this potential. There should be a new round of next-generation four-cylinders and boosted four-cylinders coming to Kia and Hyundai SUVs soon, so it may be worth waiting for those to get to the Santa Fe. I get this statistic from Consumer Reports, which uses historical vehicle data to try and predict the new car reliability of each SUV. They rate every new car on a scale from much worse than average to much better than average, with average, of course, falling in the middle. Predictably, both of these SUVs score the same, as they are based on the same platform. The only true variation comes in the form of the different engines, but either way, both SUVs are rated second best at better than average. In this segment, I'll take a look at how well each vehicle performs its intended function, and include things like available passenger space, cargo space, towing, and more. The glaring difference between the two is that the Sorento seats 7 with a third row, and the Santa Fe is more in the smaller SUV segment with the Toyota RAV4 and Honda CRV. If you need the extra seats though, I would highly suggest checking out either the Kia Telluride or the Hyundai Palisade. 
The Sorrento lives in the shadow of both of them, and I'm not really sure why the Sorrento and Telluride are sold concurrently. I expect Kia to discontinue the Sorrento, or at least the three-row version of it, shortly. They'll redirect all three-row Kia customers to the Telluride. It's a better vehicle anyway. That said, the Sorrento is enjoying pretty steep price reductions at dealers to increase its appeal next to the Telluride. So for those of you looking for the best deal, the Sorrento should still remain an option. It can tow 5,000 pounds in this all-wheel drive trim and has 11.3 cubic feet of space in the cargo hold. With the third row down, that expands to 38, and then with the second row down, it grows even more to 73 cubic feet. Total space for passengers is 154.2 cubic feet. Naturally, this is more of everything than the Santa Fe can manage, again because they're in different segments. The Santa Fe is limited to 2,000 pounds and 110 cubic feet for passengers. Strangely, the Santa Fe nearly matches the cargo capability of the larger Sorento, with 35.9 cubes behind the rear seats and 71.3 with the seats down. To me, that is the most interesting number in the whole comparison test, because the Santa Fe is supposed to be the smaller option, but it realistically holds just as much stuff. Since the vehicles are on the same platform, the rear seat in the Sorento is understandably cramped. I think this platform is better conceived for a traditional five-seater, like the Santa Fe. This category is completely subjective, so you may disagree with what I think looks good or bad. I don't want to fangirl over the Hyundai, but I truly think it's one of the best SUV designs, if not all-time designs of 2019 and 2020. I actually made a video about the best-looking cars for 2019, and this was in the top five models. Typically, I don't like thin headlights like the Santa Fe has, but somehow Hyundai made it work. The side profile is clean, and the ever-so-slightly raised rear haunches make the SUV look powerful. The rear is the best angle, and I think from here it looks gorgeous, especially the new taillights. The Sorento definitely is a bad looking SUV, I just feel like it's a bit more conservative in the styling department. Also from the front it looks too much like the Sedona, Kia's minivan, which SUVs are supposed to stay as far away from as possible. The rear is better looking, even evoking some Jeep Grand Cherokee or Dodge Durango in the way it sits. Plus, the EX trim we are testing has those sweet black wheels, which I think add to the sportiness. On the inside, the Sorento again just seems a little bit more dated, styling wise, with hard black plastics and aged button designs inside. The Santa Fe is more modern and I like the center HVAC vent shape and placement, but I think they could have gone for something more polarizing like the exterior. Long story short, if you want sex appeal or those questions from a curious onlooker about what car is that? The Hyundai has you covered. The Kia is a totally safe choice as well for those who aren't as worried about breaking necks. It's impossible for me to crown a winner in this comparison because these SUVs ultimately serve different needs. If you're cross-shopping them and want to know which to buy, your choice will come down to how badly you need the third row. If you think you can forego it, the Hyundai is the clear and obvious choice. If you absolutely need a third row, I would actually recommend the Telluride or Palisade. However, as mentioned before, the Sorento is a tried and true model with all the kinks worked out and some pretty significant discounts as this generation ends its product cycle. It's still worth checking out if this comparison allowed you to eliminate the Santa Fe, Telluride, and Palisade. Thank you for watching.